In an episode packed with excitement, Makoto will face immense pressure to reveal to the union manager where he imports the raw materials used in his shop's products. Additionally, numerous challenging matches will take... Let's find out who wins these matches and whether Makoto Kazunaha will have to disclose that he imports materials from a secondary space affiliated with the ending. Let's start with that thrilling competition today. Our first match features Dana Yuno against each other in the first round due to a cowardly noble's plan. The students engage in combat for real, and despite that, they can't afford to go easy on each other. Competition knows no mercy in those moments. The commentator announces that the winner is Dana. As for the next match, it will be the highest level of combat in that tournament. Both fighters are at level 97. The first is Jin Rohan. The boy with blue hair and the other coming from afar is named Maithra Casper, the boy wearing a green cloak. This tournament includes a small number of participants whose levels exceed 90. To maintain fairness, they will use wooden swords. However, we see Makoto saying they're doing it just to provoke the students. Then the judge tells them the match will last for 10 minutes for safety reasons. The dummies will take any damage instead of the students. But if even one dummy falls, the match ends immediately. Each student gets three dummies in case of excessive combat. Mio says three dummies won't be enough. The judge allows supportive spells only for the warrior category and bans offensive and healing spells. Now let the fighting begin. The fight starts quickly with everyone watching and cheering. Timothy watches the match and comments on Mithra's defensive moves and superior positioning, effectively undermining his opponent's morale. Makoto remarks that the only reason Mithra's opponent keeps attacking relentlessly is because he's facing Jin. The match is determined by the judge declaring Jin as the winner. Indeed, the match ends with Jin Rohan defeating his opponent Casper, prompting Timothy to comment on the high-level nature of the match. Then Mio speaks up, personally believing that Mithra won that match. Makoto asks if she means he won the fight but lost the match, to which she confirms. Next, the third match begins, where they use magic, but it turns out to be a dull match. Makoto comments that they seem to be taking it seriously, but it's quite dull. Following that, the fourth match starts between Abelia and Chifo. Before the summer break, their levels were equal, but now we'll see who's stronger. The intense match begins with both being incredibly fast. They are surprised by each other's strength and speed, with one effortlessly avoiding the other's attacks. Then one of them uses a spell that surprises everyone. It's a spell they haven't seen before, easily capturing her opponent by forming the ground into a hand shape. Chifo points her weapon at her opponent, but she doesn't do anything to her, so the other surrenders. Chifo is declared the winner, showing sportsmanship by extending her hand to her opponent. She's the beautiful soul, the sportsmanlike spirit we always see in tournaments and games. Then the scene shifts to the responsible person, who says, oh, what a disgrace, how pitiful. The winner is one of the infamous Rembrandt sisters known for their bad reputation. Perhaps she used her wealth to acquire expensive magical equipment. The nobleman then speaks to the princess, praising the excellent fight, acknowledging that even if she bought costly magical devices, it's admirable because she invested in self-improvement. However, he remarks that such deceptive fighting doesn't befit a soldier or a knight. The princess responds, asking if it's deceitful to use one's moves or techniques to eliminate demons from the sky. At that moment, everyone looks at her strangely as they don't understand anything, and neither do we. Then her name is mentioned along with the other, the princess with traditions and rituals, saying not to downplay losses on the battlefield as they don't want too much talk. Next, we see the king with yellow mustache yellow hair and beautiful eyes saying that this is very distasteful and they are looking forward to the next match. The scene then shifts back to the battlefield where in the second round of the sorcerer category, the winner Chifo will fight Izumo. Chifo then uses more spirit magic to build a barrier between her and Izumo to block all his attacks. However, Izumo uses a very powerful spell to break this barrier which he successfully does but Chifo quickly builds another barrier like it and manages to overcome Izumo. This level ends with Chifo winning. In the second round of the warrior category, Jin fights against Dana, his opponent. Jin strikes him with great force as he casts enhancing spells between attacks, leaving Mr. Makoto impressed by all of this. After that, the scene shifts to the final round of the sorcerer's category, 
where Chifo's opponent is a senior student who seems good enough to receive an offer from the Limia Accord. The student uses a hidden blue wind blade power, but it doesn't affect Chifo who then buries him underground, leaving him defeated. Chifo wins this match again. Jet approaches her to congratulate her, but she tells him she did it to scare him a little as he'll be on Hobble's team tomorrow. The students carry him out, and Jin understands that she's very upset with this tournament too. Shifo tells him she'll leave this conversation to his imagination and assures him that he already knows what she means. Then it's Jin's turn for this round, where he meets Elomugand, the final match for the Hobbles and Jets category. Elomugand charges at Jin with all his might, but he's shocked when Jin manages to deflect his attack and throw his sword away. Jin then quickly rushes towards him to strike him, using his blue power fueled in his blood. He runs towards Jin to strike him. But Jin easily throws his sword again, angering the judge who asks Jet to fight properly as his negative way won't do. He must engage more actively. Jin understands his words and strikes him with all his might, winning the fight against Ilamugan. Mr. Makoto is amazed by his students' actions and dedication. He understands that Ilamugan's equipment may be less, but his level and instincts are much more. Then Ilamugan goes to his room, angry that Jin defeated him and he vows not to let him live until he kills him. The scene then shifts to the arena where it's time for the winners from both categories to fight each other to determine the tournament champion. Tomoe mentions that Chifo has a significant advantage, but she's sure Jin has a chance. Chifo then uses her power to pull Jin underground, wanting to end this quickly, and indeed she wins this round. Everyone is amazed by her. After that, the student tournament continued and Masumi received worrying news from the Merchant's Guild, so he decided to go and see what's happening there. At night, Masumi sits with his assistant to discuss what happened at the Guild, and the assistant tells him that he couldn't do anything for him. Don't worry about it, Masumi reassures him. The Guild employee mentions that prominent figures in each country are impressed with Kuzunoa's company, implying that Masumi's day of reckoning might be near. The scene then shifts back to the students talking. One student wonders if Masumi will apologize for his absence. Jin mentions that the Merchants Guild requested to meet him. Then another student asks about Shiki's whereabouts, and Jin answers that he and his entourage are watching the matches, which makes the student happy. She then asks about the changes made to the team competition rules. Jet explains that the total team level must be less than 365. Otherwise, they'll have to adjust their team level for the match. Chibo comments that it's not as if that will change everything, as it seems like they're fighting empty spaces or straw dummies, and Masumi is an amazing teacher. It would be shameful to let another country claim him. Next we go to the king, who expresses admiration for the students' skills. The king's assistant informs him that their teacher is Masumi, representing the Kuzunoa Trading Company. The king replies that there are great men yet to be discovered in this world. After that, Mikado went to the trade guild and met with the branch leader, Zara, who asked him why he hadn't requested a meeting until now. Mikado replied, apologizing for not introducing himself earlier and explained that he had to wait for a whole month to get an appointment with him. Zara responded, acknowledging that it was a somewhat late apology. He then mentioned that an investigation had been requested regarding the goods of the Kozunoa Trading Company and their distribution. Serious concerns had been expressed about Mikado's company, suggesting that Kozunoa receives assistance from demons. Mikado expressed feeling insulted, asserting that his company is honest. The leader assured him of their confidence in that, but pointed out that the problem was related to his distribution methods. They confirmed that he purchases raw materials directly from the markets managed by the guild, but couldn't verify any travel records for his carts. Mikado thought to himself that he couldn't reveal the involvement of secondary space. He decided he would have to deceive Zara in some way. He then told Zara that they use the same methods as other trading companies, but assumed the carts were from the Rembrandt Trading Company hence the lack of travel records under Kazunoa's name. The leader inquired about documents comparing materials, indicating that Mikado seemed to buy from elsewhere besides the markets. Mikado responded that this was the first he had heard of this investigation. Had he known, the leader stated that the guild would decide whether Mikado's company was innocent or not. Mikado assured them of his willingness to cooperate and clear his name. 
The leader expressed surprise at Mikado's ability to run a trading company, but questioned why he couldn't act appropriately given his position and circumstances. Mikado asked directly what they wanted him to do, suspecting an attempt at extortion through conditions he couldn't accept. This conversation leaves Mikado stunned as the investigator asks if he caused problems for Rem. Even in that tough conversation, the investigator leaves Mikado with a lingering thought, but you will tell us about your distribution methods. You must speak to continue your company's progress. Mikado thinks to himself, I don't know what to do anymore. He explains that he used the instant teleportation spell unique to his powerful followers. Naturally, he didn't mention the secondary space, thinking everything was going smoothly. However, when Miu learns of this conversation, she becomes very angry and wants to eliminate the investigator right then and there. Her friend advises her to calm down, saying they should have gone with Mikado. But Tomoe reassures Mio that Mikado has become a merchant, even capable of supplying everyone with medicine. He needs to negotiate with traders who only care about their profits. Tomo tells Mio she's naive, though not necessarily wrong. It's part of doing business, especially if you're conducting honest dealings. Mio is annoyed by this talk, but Tomo continues, suggesting that this might be an opportunity to abandon the human right. She asks if Mio plans to establish a relationship with demons in the end. Miu is disturbed and says she doesn't think she should serve anyone who exploits her kindness. Mikado agrees with Tomo, saying she's right, and he plans to establish a relationship with demons once the Academy Festival ends and the borrowing or acquisition of the land that Tomo found is settled. And so it ends with a debt to the demons, a compromise that pleases everyone as they continue working with the humans while maintaining a connection with the demons. Everyone rejoices at this good decision. Then they say Kalanon was once part of the YCs and, and it was the homeland of my parents. They met here and became adventurers, traveling around the world. In other words, it's like my home too. Cheeky mentions that Eva Amina from the library and Loria are also from there. Mikado learns that it's their homeland as well. So he decides to ask them to make a choice. Cheeky responds positively, seeing it as the winning move to solve their current problems. Miu has no objections to her master's decision and is pleased that everyone accepted his choice. Now that both heroes have sided with the humans, there shouldn't be a problem with the third man from another world who overlooks some of the demon's actions. And with that, our episode concludes. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes of this anime. But please do subscribe to the channel and activate the notification bell to receive all the latest updates.